Hi everyone, my name is Psyche and today is officially Flan and Zoo launch day and I'm so excited. I wanted to share my first ever speed build with you so I'll be showing you a habitat I built for my two giant pandas this evening. I'm just getting started with the building and terrain tools which you will more than likely see in just a second so this is definitely a pretty basic build, don't judge me. I'm hoping this will help some of you get started with some more creative builds yourself as I'm learning at the same time. Here I'm just wrestling with the terrain tools and the one thing that I find hardest in this game is pathing. I can never seem to get paths to do what I want them to but I think once you learn how they work with a little bit of practice it starts to make more sense because I keep seeing people who are able to make them do wondrous things and curve perfectly and follow the terrain with no problems and I'm still kind of bashing my head against the wall but I'm determined that I will make it work. I'm using the terrain stamp tool here and then just the different sculpting tools to pull up into what I want to be a kind of mountain viewing area with guests looking down into the habitat. I'd also really like to build some cute kind of East Asian Chinese themed uh, temples and buildings and things like that around the top but I haven't done that yet as you will see in just a second. One of my absolute favorite parts about Planet Zoo is that there are so many tools at your disposal to teach you about the animals that you're adopting and bringing into your zoo. So you'll see me looking at the Zoopedia just to learn different things about what the habitat needs to have for the giant pandas. And one of the things I looked up was what kind of barrier they need. And I did read that it needs to be not climbable, but I got the barrier wrong and you'll see why in a little while. I initially planned for this little area at the back to be a cave that guests could walk behind and look in but I remembered that I didn't really like that from my beta zoo so I decided that I was just going to make it the habitat gate so that keepers could easily access the uh, habitat from behind. Here I'm just wrestling with making sure that the barriers are hidden. I wanted to use null barriers and I remembered that there was an issue before where if I used a null barrier inside the habitat, if an animal stepped outside that barrier, it counted as being outside the habitat, obviously. So I just wanted to make sure that it was actually embedded in the wall. So I just kind of fiddled around with this a little bit till I got it where I wanted it. Here I'm just playing around with the terrain tools again, because I wanted to make a kind of river slash pond type thing that was just in front of their cave. I thought that that might be quite nice because I had seen earlier in the day a really lovely little Chinese bridge that I could use and suddenly I had an idea for what I wanted it to look like. And now comes the one part that I find the most enjoyable to watch when other people are making Planet Zoo habitats and content and the one thing that I am super inexperienced in and still learning, and that is building things out of composite parts. I didn't really know what I was building when I started. Uh, I just knew that I wanted it to be a kind of temple type building. I didn't want it to be too big. And I just got started and let it flow. There are so many different props it's worth noting that a lot of these are only available if you complete research. I am playing in sandbox mode here, so I have all of the content unlocked, whereas I normally play in franchise mode and have only got a couple of pieces unlocked. Here I used a lot of the, uh, just the shapes, and it's really funny because it reminds me of when I played Planet Coaster and I made some very questionable looking Pokemon for my Pokemon themed park. So yeah, let's hope that this isn't quite as disturbing as my Jigglypuff. I really knew that I wanted to have some kind of like patterned roof type thing going on here, but I just couldn't get it right at first. So I experimented with a lot of pieces until I found the one that I wanted to use. In case you, like me, were very new to building in games like this, uh, one of the best tools that I have found is the duplicate tool. You can pretty much select the pieces that you have been building with and then press Control X and that allows you to duplicate and then just drag it across using the advanced move, which is really, really useful, especially if you're building with a lot of tiny parts. 
And right at this precise moment is when I realized what I wanted to build. And I actually saw it in my head. And I, I don't know if something like this exists in real life or if this is something that you would actually find anywhere, but it's it it just took form in my head and I decided I was going to try and make it and see how it turned out. And I quite like the result. Gotta make sure you have all the accent pieces together and then also make sure that you select everything and duplicate it, which I very obviously didn't do as I missed one of the pieces and was kicking myself for afterwards. As is probably obvious, I'm still not really 100% sure what I'm doing with group building. And that's something that I'm hoping I will get used to eventually. But I decided that I wanted to put a kind of base on this little building and had to do a little bit of fiddling to get it to work, but it ended up working out okay. And thank goodness a bell already exists in the East Asian pack because I don't think I had it in me to try and craft a bell from the composite parts. I think that would have taken me forever and I'm sure it wouldn't have looked anything like a bell, but thankfully they did have one. I did save this as a blueprint and it will be on the workshop if you would like to try and download it. I will definitely be using it in the future for some of the animals that I have in my franchise park as soon as I have all of the research completed to give me the little parts that I need. Once again, I used the Zoopedia to double check what kind of temperature uh, pandas like and as it turns out they like a temperate biome. I am currently playing in a tropical African uh, park so that's not exactly suitable so I added a couple of coolers I'm not sure if it was necessary but I decided to do it anyway just in case I always like to have the animals already inside the habitat whenever I start doing like terrain and plants and stuff because then I can always double check if I've got enough or if I've got the right things in there so I moved my pandas in and then got a little bit of a head start because I figured they were probably going to want most likely short grass probably a little bit of soil maybe some snow i'm not sure so i moved them in and then got started and just waited for them to arrive of course i did forget to add a staff path from the habitat and then i fiddled around with pathing for a little bit until i got it right i do want to keep her hut to be in here at the back but that wasn't the important part for now so we'll sort that out later and now comes my absolute favorite part of designing habitats and that's the decoration and painting part so I started out by just painting the terrain a little bit and then going in and adding some bamboo because we all know that pandas like bamboo. If you find that you're building in the dark, you can click the little icon at the bottom of the screen there and you will be able to switch to daytime, which lets you see what you're doing, which is great. So I decided to make a little pathway up to the sort of bell, the temple bell type thing and then decorate it with rocks. I love rocks in this game. I know that sounds silly, but I just really like adding rocks for flavor. <laughs> I like giving a little bit of depth to everything. I put them everywhere. I just, I don't know. I don't know what it is about them. I just think that they add so much. And you will see I go completely and utterly overboard in just a second because I decided that it was going to be great to put a bunch of rocks around the cave wall, even though it's already a cave. I don't know. I'm not really sure what I was thinking, but I think it turned out to look okay. Here we go. Loads of rocks because, you know, I heard you like rocks, so we put rocks in your rocks or something. Yep, still still going with the rocks. Apparently we needed more. I'm just really proud of myself for not covering the entire mountainside in rocks cuz that would have taken a long time. Now I'm adding some plants and of course I had to start with bamboo because again pandas like bamboo that makes sense. There are two types of bamboo at least in the Asian uh, temperate category and that would be Bengal bamboo which is the ones you just saw me put down and I believe the other one's called fountain bamboo. Uh, I actually only noticed the first kind and put a bunch of them down for the beginning and then eventually I found out there was a second kind and started dotting it around as well. I also really like putting down the little like accent flowers and things. The lily pads don't actually fit in this biome at all, but they looked pretty. And you know what? Isn't looking pretty half of the point of making a habitat in this game? I really wanted to put something like reeds or something similar down, but I ended up just deciding to put some bushes in there and then added a few pretty trees around as well. 
I just like, I, I like decorating. Oh look, hey, we're, we're doing more rocks because, you know, we didn't already have enough rocks. What is it with me and rocks? I don't, I don't understand. Aside from the rocks, I did go ahead and add a few trees and bushes around this kind of like little rock pool area. And I even added some of the fountain bamboo in. And I just, I feel like it's all starting to come together a little bit. I, I added some nettles. I'm not really a big fan of nettles, but I am a big fan of those little twin flowers. They're my favorite. Now it's just a case of adding a few finishing touches. We're trying to get the plant types and the coverage up to meet the giant pandas requirements, which I think was around 30% if I'm remembering correctly. And then I added a few little accents just around the temple bell again, because I thought this would be kind of like a garden area almost. I did add some dead cherry blossom trees. I'm not sure how prevalent they are in China. I like, We do get them here, but um, again, I'm not sure whereabouts exactly they, they fit, but they do fit with the Asian temperate climate. So I figured it made sense. Now we're just adding some finishing touches, a little bit more bamboo, some plants here and there. I tried getting ivy to work, but I just couldn't really find a place for it to work. Uh, so we just added some uh, extra nettles and plants and flowers and things all outside the front of the cave lining the path on the way up to the temple bell. And then I added a rose bush and I think that's pretty much all the plants that we needed. So now we just add in the food, uh, water and some enrichment items. Now again, these are all unlocked because I'm playing in sandbox mode here. Normally, if you're playing in any of the other game modes, you'd have to use research to unlock all of the enrichment items, especially some of the later ones. And finally, you get to see my wall mistake. My barrier was climbable and I thought it was just the height. And that's the end of the build. I hope you enjoyed watching as much as I enjoyed building it. I know it's not as complex or complicated or creative as some of the wonderful creations of the Planet Zoo community and Planet Coaster community, but I really enjoyed it and I'm actually really happy with how it turned out, especially this temple bell. As you can see, I'm taking a screenshot of it. I know it's not like a big deal, but to me it was and it took me forever. Uh, I hope that I can bring you more creative creations, which is totally a saying in the future if that is something you're interested in i will be uploading more planet zoo videos over the next little while because i'm already pretty hooked on the game uh, i also stream on twitch.tv forward slash psyche that's p-s-y-c-h-e i stream monday to friday at noon uk time and i usually stream for about five to six hours we'll be playing a lot of planet zoo but i do play a lot of other games as well please feel free to come and say hi or just lurk we have a really positive and welcoming community and you would be more than welcome to come hang out with us at any time. All the links will be in the description as well as the credit for the really relaxing music in the background. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you enjoy playing Planet Zoo as much as I do. If you have any feedback for this video or any questions or anything at all, please feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Thanks everybody. Bye.